Okay, hello everyone. Um, we're back for my second major video. Um, you guys might remember my ridiculously monotone voice from the Zuck guide that I put out at the start of the year. Um, now I've done 4K solo Zami, um, and a fair few people have asked me to kind of do an explanation of a similar style, so here we are. Um, getting into it, it's all just standard perk stuff. Obviously, we for something like this, it's best in slot gear. Um, Biting 4 Mobile, Imp 4, Dev 4, Relentless 5, Crackling 4, Invig 4, Demon Slayer. It's just PS6, AS1, AS4, E2 on the Wand and Orb. And then same on the Staff. Um, we run a Defender with AS4, E2 on it. The Arcane has Lucky 6, Absorbative 1 on it. Um, I choose to bring an SGB, absolutely not required. That has P6, AS1, EQ4, R3 on it. Um, this is a staff, oh, sorry, an Armadal Battle Staff EOF, and we have the Zami Staff EOF. Um, there are full arrows in the quiver for the SGB spec, should you choose to use that. And then the rest of the stuff is all just standard, what you can see. Um, Bless Flask is pretty nice for this. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the perks. So, um, running through the kill, I'm going to do the full kill. I'm going to slow down P7 and explain my rationale behind pretty much every single action that I take on P7 and why. Um, I I kind of didn't really follow like a meta for this. I kind of got a few tips from people along the way and then kind of just made my own thing up as I went along. Um, so what I do during this kill is absolutely not optimal. Um, I don't, I'm not going to pretend to be the best <laughs> DPSer in the world, because I'm definitely not. Uh, I don't 4-tick, so full disclosure, I don't 4-tick, so my kills are probably significantly slower than people who do 4-tick. Um, however, I do use full manual, I just choose not to 4-tick because I CBF. Um, <clears throat> other than that, um, yeah, I'll just try and explain the way I do a kill. Um, this is a repeat 4k kill, so this is not the kill I got the title on. I just went back to get this footage for the uh, video purpose. So, yep, I'll, um, I'll get the footage started and we'll get into it. Um, I'll try not to pause the kill too much. Um, I'll just try to let it play through in real time for the most part until we get to P7. Okay, so here's the kill. Um, yeah, you're obviously gonna wanna make sure you're an inside fear to start off. Um, animate dead, all the rest of that. Uh, my pad order is two, four, six, three, one, five. So I charge up the pad straight away as to just make the amount of healing that he does as little as possible. Um, doing it this way, I typically always phase it when I want to just before he does his first spec. So if you deplete the first bar, sorry, if you deplete the red bar before he does his first spec, then you'll have a much better time. So I reflect the melee hit with Soul Split Up. It hits uh, 17, nearly 18k damage. Um, run in and collect the smoke, and you don't need any defensives to res this smoke bomb here, so you can just res that one pretty safely. And you won't get sniped by an auto just because of the way that the kill starts with attack timings. Um, I run over to the next pad. I'm anticipating and I double try to double stun the way in. So I hold an asphyx and then impact on the tick that I go in. Just in case something misses, I'm using a double stun. Uh, it's just good practice for if you do teams as well. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so just switch back to Insight Fear once you're in the Mind or in the Infernus rather. Um... And then, yeah, you just pretty much kill this guy. When I come out, I divert, um, and then sun. So I'm pretty much back at 60 or 70 Adren straight away. Saves me having to use an A-pot, and I just Tsunami Staff spec. I probably do this part of the fight a little bit uh, differently to other people, I would say. Um, I actually intentionally get this rune spec here. Uh, I could phase it before, but I choose not to. And the reason I do that is because I try to... I basically try to get good enough damage here to get that gray bar all the way down to zero. Because if you do that, it makes for a really good second phase. Um, on this occasion, I did not get the gray bar down anywhere near, near as low enough. So the second phase um, 
It's not as fast as it should have been or could have been. And yeah, this witch scales all the way up. Every single kill her HP scaling, so she becomes kind of a mini boss in herself. Um, but that's fine. You just make sure you swap to insight for you once you're killing her. Because uh, when you come out, you're going to want to be dropping your sun. Which, if my memory serves me, I didn't actually do on this phase right here. So I... Yeah, I just didn't sun. I thought that I did, um, but I just didn't. So, uh, sadly this makes for a pretty slow second phase, just due to my error, not realizing that I didn't sun. But that's fine. If I had have sunned, it probably could have gone much smoother, but not to worry. Uh, yeah, so I reflect that uh, pretty much always until the later phases. <clears throat> you got to be careful with the bomb timing on that one. You don't need a defensive. You can just straight res that second bo that bomb right there. However, you do have to be careful with an auto attack sniping you for that one. So you do have to get the res on tick. Um, anticipate going in. Uh, entangling this demon is very, very nice. You don't have to entangle it, but I'd highly recommend just learning how to entangle. It's very easy and saves you a lot of hassle. <laughs> Uh, switching back to Insight Fear, and then on the way out we Divert, drop our Sun. Divert didn't proc, so we hold it, and now we're sending a Dren, Tsunami Staff spec, onto Blood Barrage, and then just a full DPS rotation until he does the next spec, which is Adrenaline Cage. Um, you can see I've actually got an Alt-1 overlay in the bottom right of my screen near my Hellhound. It tells me what spec is coming next. You guys can get that from PVME. Um, extremely, extremely useful overlay. <laughs> definitely saves you having to th have a lot of thinking about which spec is coming next and you can kind of focus more on auto attack counting and stuff like that. <clears throat> so yeah, sadly didn't phase it in time there, so I got another repeat spec, which is fine. Um, and then yeah, just uh, I went in a bit early there, so I had to do some disruption shield, shield doming business in order to not die from that bomb. Uh, yep, so we're on the Witch, so make sure we're back on Insight Fear. <clears throat> At this point in the fight, his Grey Bar is always going to go back up to 300k, so it doesn't really matter how long it takes you to kill the Witch. Um, he's always going to be chilling at 300k, so... got the divert off there divert is extremely useful to learn how to use um the massive adren that you get from from it with his high hitting autos is very very beneficial <clears throat> uh yep so the double stun again with the asphyx and the impact Go in and tangle. It's pretty much much of the same stuff. I probably swap back to Insight Fear, which I do. And Demon Slayer Sigil. And uh, I actually sign coming up here on the way out. Um, I forget which spec is coming next for some reason I just don't realize it's the adrenaline cage so I do take a sign coming up here <clears throat> yeah it should be probably now one more and there's the sign so yeah Oopsie, um, should have done a much better job counting autos there and realizing what spec, what spec was coming next, but I think because uh, my spec rotation on this particular kill was unusual, uh, usually I think I'm one spec ahead of where I was, so I was just a little bit kind of out of whack of where I should be. Um, 
yeah, so I definitely recommend bringing in the defender for this purpose. Um, having a defender on and being able to still conk and also not getting massively prayer smited when you use immortality is really, really nice. Uh, if you're not bringing a defender, I think you should put it in your preset. It's very, very uh, good to have. Occasional SGB, uh, anticipate and then stunning on the way in. The sun timing, if you're trying to learn that, it's quite late. Um, you want to stun as soon as kind of the teleport animation appears. Uh, it's very easy to time once you know how to time it. And you pretty much will never miss them. But uh, at this high end rage, you've got to be careful because it can hit you quite big once you're uh, in the mind. So yeah, I was about to phase, so I chose to Tsunami Staff Spec in Infernus. Uh, my headset just turned off one second. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I chose to Tsunami Staff Spec in Infernus, come out and meta in hopes to phase uh, with good timing. Um, phasing straight after Adrenaline Cage there is perfectly fine, so I'll have five autos for my next spec. Uh, be careful if you lose sight of Zami um, when he's throwing autos at you because he can switch his auto attack style. So if you're praying mage and you surge away and you don't keep an eye on him, as soon as he comes back into sight and starts throwing autos at you, he could start throwing range ones. And if you're not ready to pray switch, uh, they will just straight up kill you. So if you're surging away, try to always kind of keep your camera angle pointed towards him so you can see which autos he's throwing at you. Uh, yep, so this part of the fight, um, I'm doing pad 3, so this is where the witches spawn. Charge up the pad, I surge out, and just to show you guys, there's like a rock here that I'm standing on. This is a good spot to drop your sun, because the witch is going to come in, and you'll still be able to touch Zami. If you sun on the pad, then you won't be able to reach the witch, so it's going to be a pain. But yeah, that rock on the ground right there is where I aim to kind of land. Uh, tsunami staff spec on the witch. And it's going to be five orders into Chaos Blast. So I think that was like three. So now you can just basically unload. And uh, you definitely don't want to be stunning and breaking his shield. Um, because you use this opportunity to basically just pump out as much damage as you can. This is essentially like your time to do free damage. If you stun and vit pot and do all that other stuff. It's just taking away from how much damage you could probably be doing otherwise. So. Yep, you just immort at the end. Uh, always with the defender. Constantly have to keep checking your familiar's life points. Um, and then yeah, so one when we're on red bar, um, it's ten autos between specs, and green bar is five. Um, on red bar, Zami's auto attacks hit one tick faster. Um, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about that, I guess. Uh, moving on, just straight back into this much of the same. Uh, I've Reflect on the way into this one. Reflect damage does actually hit Zami once you're in Infernus. So if you come in and Reflect that red smoke, it will actually do damage to him outside as well, which is pretty nice. So we're about halfway through the fight right now. It is quite a long one. Um, I think I have... Two pads to go, but a full phase to do, so... Um, reflecting this attack is really good. Um, if you reflect it with Soul Split Up, you'll probably reflect like 50-60k damage. Uh, if you reflect it with Prey Mage, half that. Um, but yeah, if you have really high HP, reflecting the soul split up during the Adrenaline Cage spec will deal very big damage. And then yeah, now is just another, uh, another Immort opportunity because of the Teyu Asunder spec. Um, yeah, I just like Immort early because I've got a Defender, so it's easy enough to just keep conking and throw on shards and stuff like that. And I was close to phasing anyway, so I didn't need to worry too much about pumping out extra damage there. 
Um, I attempt to just like Devo and stuff just when I'm tanking autos like this setting up for the next phase. I try to like land on, I try to have my positioning so that when I come out from killing the witch, it just starts charging the pad instantly. That's kind of where I prefer to have my positioning because that means I'm tanking less autos um, before like the bar charges up basically. Um, I don't know if that's like sound rationale or whatever, but basically like as soon as I come out from killing the witch, I'm only going to be tanking three autos before I get my pull my adrenaline back. So sun divert on the way out as usual. I get up to seventy tsunami staff spec straight into uh, blood barrage, and now I've got five autos before the next spec. So one, two. Three, four, and five. So now it'd be Rune of Destruction. Um, and the positioning that I'm standing in, the Rune won't hit me. So I can just stay still. And for the for this spec, um, I pretty much try not to really avoid the smoke at all. The smoke's kind of fine. As long as you're using some sort of defensive, you can pretty much just stand where you want to. Um, your res will always take priority over a smoke hit if you get it on tick. Um, so you can res an auto in the middle of the smoke provided it's on tick um and then yeah because we're still on red bar i was counting autos here because i knew that i was going to get smited like that the adrenaline cage when you're on red bar will smite you so you do have to count autos um if you're on green bar you won't get smited by adrenaline cage so but yeah into chaos blast so just another tsunami staff spec um and now this part of the fight is kind of time sensitive in the sense that I have a fixed spot in which I phase um, for this pad specifically. So you always want to phase the end here after Zami does Flames of Zamrak spec. It doesn't have to be the tick that he does the spec. It can be a couple of autos after, um, something like that. But you always want to make sure Flames of Zami is the last spec that he does. Because if you do that, that means that Chaos Blast will be the first spec that he does on the next phase. Which will allow you to do the vast majority of the red bar on the next phase. Before really even taking any autos at all from Zami. <clears throat> so I actually make use of Barricade here because I'm not in a hurry to phase. Just burning time. Um, I'm barricaded there, praying melee, running in, collecting the smoke. So I reflect here. Because he's on red bar, he is going to be throwing faster autos. So, the um, this auto here will snipe my res if I'm not careful. Which, in this case, it looked like I wasn't careful. Because I've resed early, but I did make sure that I have multiple defensives up in order to counteract this bomb. So I've got Reflect up, I've got Debil up, I've got Res up, and I've got Disruption Shield up. So if this auto snipes my res, which I think it does then I've got all of these other things, the Disrupt, the Reflect, and the Debil, that are going to stop it from KOing me. Looks like I actually did get a heal there, 4.9k, so my res must have gone off, I must have been able to time that correctly. However, if I didn't have some of these defensives up, that probably would have killed me. So you do have to be quite careful when, oh, I shield domed as well, on top of everything else. Um, that bomb will hit high on that phase, so you do have to be very careful with the timing of that. Um, make really good use of preparation on this phase to get regular resonance, because the autos now are really starting to hurt. So, you'll see that I'm, if I've got my wand and shield camping on, I'm pretty much preparation the whole entire time. Um, and that just allows me to be able to basically not die and not have to eat food. Uh, as you can see at this point in the fight, I haven't touched my food at all, so that's kind of what like I'm going for. I basically want to be saving as much food as I can for the last phase, just in case I need it. I usually don't, however, learning how to like no food these kills is pretty important. Um, but the harder you safe, the slower your kills will be. But if you are going for 4k, you want consistency over speed anyway. <coughs> So yeah, uh, on the way out of this pad, I still stay standard where I am. I anticipate, because I know I'm going to get stunned by the traps that spawns on the ground. I have Tsunami Staff spec and now I know I'm going to be tanking 5 autos, and it's going to be Chaos Blast. So, 
this is like basically your opportunity to get the red bar down as much as you possibly can. Um, and you saw that auto there hit me a 4k, so yeah, you do have to be pretty careful. Um, you will get hit hard, and yeah, if you're not careful, you will just you will just die. <clears throat> um, so at this point, I do actually manage to deplete the red bar in time. I see a trap underneath him that I could see potentially being a problem, so I quickly just go and proc that because I have him moored up and I'm going to sign anyway. And then I always stand on this side, right here where I'm standing. Uh, this is where I always stand because I know the smoke rotation is not going to give me too much problems. If I stand here and smoke spawns, usually it can spawn in a random location, but it spawns in a fixed location in the sense that it's not too far every single kill. So sometimes it'll spawn here, sometimes it'll spawn here. So if I'm standing about here, worst case scenario, I'm only going to get hit by one piece of the smoke as it spawns, and it's not going to stun me. And then when the smoke comes back around, I'm going to be barricaded anyway, so the smoke never gives me any problems. <clears throat> so yeah, you'll see I res prep, I res prep, and then I res again. That gets me to full, and now I'm cading. So I'm going to have one more auto after this, and then it's going to be um, Flames of Zamorak spec. Now I'm under barricade, and I'm trying to build, because I'm going to be dealing with the bomb that comes after Flames of Zami. <clears throat> So I'm under Anticipate, so I don't get stunned by the smoke. Um, I build now, and then I'm debilling, and then I run in Reflect. I run in Devotion, and then I can res early because I'm Devotioned, and then Disrupt. So I'm basically stacking max defensives, but that never KOs me. Um, I don't think you need all those defensives. I just choose to use them because it makes me feel safe. <laughs> And I've got no reason not to, because I barricade earlier, so I've got the defensives available to me. <laughs> so, old Tsunami staff spec on the demon here. Um, just because you, I'm wary of my cooldowns and stuff like that, with the one minute cooldown on staff spec, you don't want to be worrying about that going into P7. However, with the way that I do it, I wouldn't need to really worry about it anyway, because I do actually intentionally elongate this phase. So I enter P7 the same every single kill. I'll explain how I do that, because this is where it starts to get tricky. <clears throat> but yeah, I just come out, um, finish off the Tsunami Staff spec that I have active, do kind of as much damage as I can there. You ideally want to get it down to 130, 140k at this point, which I do. Um, maybe even a little bit lower. Um, and then I barricade the third auto, which is now. Maybe that was the fourth one on this case, but you can usually barricade on the third and that's fine. <laughs> and then the same as before, I debil. Um, reflect, devotion, res early, because you're on devotion, and then destruction shield. Now, at this point, the HP was actually kind of high, so I did have to do a bit of dumping here. Ideally, you want it to be about 30k for your Anticipate. And then Stunning, and then going in. So now, at this point of the fight is where I'll start to kind of slow down the video um, and explain a little bit more what's going on, because this is where everyone seems to struggle. So, the deal is... Um, the boss has got 39k HP left on it. That's a good spot to be. Ideally, in a perfect world, I'd want that to be about 20. 40 is fine, though. So you want to get in and out of the mind as fast as possible here, or in Furnace, rather. <sighs> um, smoke's coming towards me. I see that I've got uh, 10k um, HP. Now, I know this smoke with a staff on or a wand and orb on is going to hit me for about a 4k, and with a wand and a shield on, probably hit me for about a 2k, unless I use defensives. So... We'll go here, and it hit me for pretty much exactly 2k, because I had the wand on the shield on. Now, if I was smart about this, I would have paid more attention to that, and I would have actually had the staff on, or the wand and the orb on, to entangle the demon there, because I wanted to get hit higher. Um, might sound funny, but the way I do P7 is I always enter P7 with under 7k life points. That gives me Guardian's Gift to kill the demon on P7 entry, uh, makes the demon killing very consistent, a much more less of a headache. I don't do that in this case, unfortunately, but you basically are instantly entangling the demon. Um, you don't need to stay on him. 
I was just building a little bit there because my adrenaline was low, and then just run straight back out. Now, Zami has a period of time here where he won't attack you at all, which is perfectly fine. Is That's by going in and coming straight back out. He does get back on me. I make sure that I've healed my familiar. Now, I did mess up there because, as you can see, I entered at 7.1k HP. So my HP is a little bit high for P7. Typically, I try to enter at 6.5. Um, that's the best HP to enter at if you want to use Guardian's Gift to your full advantage to kill a demon. <clears throat> so, at this point of the fight, there's a couple of little things you can do to make your life a little bit easier. I'm just going to slow this right down and try and explain to you guys. So, as you can see, I right-click my Excalibur and I'm spamming my Demon Slayer Keybind. As soon as my Demon Slayer Keybind goes off, I can click my Excalibur and the Excalibur will activate, and the Demon Slayer will activate, and that'll be before you even drop into P7. So, I think in that case, I may have intentionally delayed my, or not intentionally, but I may have just forgotten to press my Demon Slayer keybind until the last possible second, but you can actually activate that a touch earlier. Um, but basically now, Demon Slayer is activated. I've just clicked my Camelot, so that's going to go off and I don't target cycle the demon here because if you target cycle the demon headset's broken again one second if you uh if you target the demon um sorry if you target cycle the demon it can target cycle onto the rune and then you're in big trouble so you're always clicking the demon on p7 entry um, at this point, I'm also spamming my Ice Barrage Keybind, which for me is the letter U. So I'm spamming the letter U, and as I'm doing that, it's going to start running me towards Zamorak, because Zamorak's my current target. So I'm spamming the Keybind U, and then I'm clicking the Chaos Demon as soon as I possibly can, and that's going to ensure that an Ice Auto is the first thing that flies off and hits a Demon. If I wasn't spamming the Keybind then an Insight Fear Auto would activate on the Demon as soon as I clicked it. Um, and then you're going to waste a lot of time. It'll be a uh, full global cooldown waste because you have to fire off another auto. <clears throat> so yeah, I ice the Demon instantly. As you can see there, I ice the Demon straight away. Now at this point, I can Voln the Demon and the Voln will always hit. And then I Wild Magic straight away. So I've just Voln the Demon, I've Wild Magic, and now I'm tanking the first auto from Zami, making sure I'm praying Mage. So I've just tanked the first auto. After the Wild Magic, I Omni the Demon. This is the same every single time. I'm starting to run towards the location where I want to set my Sunshine up. So I get a heal there from the uh, the, the the Hex effect, or the... what do you, What's the opposite of Hex? The... The pad effect, whatever you want to call it. I get a little heal there, which allows me to tank the second order from Zami with ease while I'm still juicing the demon. Um, at this point, also, my HP is quite low, 4.7, so I am hitting max damage on the demon because I'm under that 7k threshold. <clears throat> now, I'm running to the spot where I want to place my sun. You ideally want to place it into this spot or somewhere similar to this spot so that your sun can reach three of the runes, the bee, the star, and the harmonica the names that I've called them. Um, you'll see at this point that I've just done my Combust on the Demon. He's just about to start running because the ice is going to wear off. So the Combust is going to kill him there. Um, but you see I'm 99% of Dren. I don't have a full global cooldown to waste. So I think I drink my A-Pot early here. I should, which I do. So I drink my A-Pot early and then instantly drop my Sun. That gives me the 1% of Dren that I need for my Sun. And then now my A pot's ticking over. So Demon's going to start running towards me. The Combustor's going to kill him. Uh, I just use an extra auto on him for um, for Adren. I get Lucky and I get the B rune, which I can instantly Tsunami Staff Spec on. So I instantly Tsunami Staff Spec onto the B rune, switch my spell to Blood Autos, which is quite important. And then, unfortunately, I do get a back rune here. So... <clears throat> At this point, you I'm just making sure, essentially, that I have killed this rune. These runes have a propensity to live with, like, 3 HP. So you do really have to make sure you finish them off. Um, so I deep breath and I'm starting to run. Now, you'll see that, I think, probably what I'll do is I will have cast that deep breath and then I'm going to be surging 
towards this back rune off global cooldown as to not waste a global cooldown. If I debreath, yes, yeah, so see how I've surged and the global cooldown is still recharging from the point that I debreathed? If I debreath and then wait a full, a full 1.8 seconds and then surge, I'm going to have to then wait 1.8 seconds before I can use my first ability on the back rune. So the debreath and then the surging within that same global cooldown is very important because that's going to save you significant time. As you can see here, red bar is already up to 26k and I had a front rune in a sun. So that's pretty much as fast as it gets. Um, so I'm getting down to the back here and now global cooldown is back up so I'm free to use another ability. Um, at this point, I am also healing, just a, 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 like a, a solid and a brew. Um, I'm under staff spec, I'm blood barraging, which is good. And basically now I'm just using high damaging abilities as best I can to kill this rune as fast as possible, whilst also trying to maintain high enough for Dren that when I get back to Zami, I'm not having issues. So I tag with the wild magic, then I conk, because that's big damage. I'm healing throughout the um, whole entire time here. Looks like I got lucky with a couple of crits there, which meant that I was firing autos off, which is very lucky. Um, it also meant that I had good healing. So at this point, um, this is like all happening in your head very like fast. So I had 1.8k left on the route. I knew my next ability was probably going to kill it. Ah, right. That's where I messed up. So um, in this kill, um, I ran early. I thought that the previous ability that I had used would have finished the rune off, but it didn't. And then my familiar did not come through with a hit that was large enough. Uh, not that I intended for that to happen anyway. But I realized that I left the rune alive and I had to run back and correct it. Otherwise, I was screwed. So I run back. I just cast a basic first one that I see. First one that I had access to my fingers in order to finish the rune off. And then I'm instantly surging back up in a, a globe, like off a global cooldown again as to not waste time um let's see how much hp the red bar had so if i had killed the rune there this would have been a pretty chill p7 but i didn't i messed up and as a result of that the red bar healed an extra 6k um so i left the rune with 100 hp and as a result of that 6k on the red bar because i had to run back so 46k was what the red bar was up to now, I'm 100% Adren, which is perfect. I'm nearly full HP, which is perfect. Uh, my Blood Barrage is on, which is good. And now I'm going to be surging back up to my Sun. Once I'm on my Sun, I'm clicking Zami. You can probably target cycle if you choose, but I usually just prefer to click it. <coughs> and I Devo. Um, so Devo is the first ability I use. I could have Devoed down at the back rune um, and maybe finish the rune with an auto instead of using Corrupt on it like I did. However, I tend to just Devo here because I find that I have adequate time to do so. So I Devo. Uh, I throw the Vom Bomb. Uh, Omni is my first ability, which drops me down to 67 Adren. So praying melee uh, with Devo means this attack is not going to hit me, which it doesn't. Perfect. And then at this point, I have just to build. Um, I Vit Pot. And then I disrupt. And then I go straight into my tendrils from there. So tendrils um, is really good here because the blood autos are going to heal you pretty big. The red smoke hits me for 19k, which is quite high, but that's fine. I get a full channel tendrils off during that animation, um, which gives me good healing from the blood autos. And then as he's throwing in this first attack from his twin shot, with the subsequent red smoke hits. As soon as that is hitting me, I'm reflecting the very first one. So you'll see here, I've just put my arcane on. I got 6.9k HP and I reflect. So I reflect just as that hit hits me. I drop down to 2k HP, which is fine because the reflect um, makes these subsequent hits fairly small and they, not fairly small, but they make them much smaller. Um, and then it also allows you to, um, I, I lost my train of thought where I was going with that. However, th the reflecting that first hit will end up dealing huge reflect damage. So you can see here, it dealt 7.9, 3.7. So, uh, it, 
at this point also my fungal shield procced and I know that I need to eat any second. Um, you do have to shatter before you start spam eating here because your shatter can splash and it does splash. So I shatter before I drink my first rocktail brew, which is there. And now I'm starting to spam heal. So I get lucky on the first hit because my fungal shield procced, which is perfect. Um, so you basically are now spam healing throughout the rest of this fight. Boss is already down to 130k because the reflect damage is going to start coming through. Uh, there's another reflect hit of 10k and 6.6. Um, my fungal shield's probably almost empty at this point, I would say. So everything else now that I need to do is reliant on how much food I can put in my mouth in a, the shortest period of time possible. I'm not worried at all about damage output here. This is literally, at this point, just surviving. <clears throat> I eat again. I get lucky on this part because the twin shot splashed. Then, the final twin shot didn't splash. Um, so, it hits me for 3.8 and a 1.5. But because he goes immune there, the reflect doesn't do any damage. So that's a bit annoying. Um, now, every kill I've gotten in the habit at this point of diverting the melee slam. So, I click divert. I don't have a bind for it. I prefer to click it. So, I click divert. And I'm doing that just as the melee slam is about to hit me. <clears throat> and you cannot get sniped by the demon, no matter where you're standing, if you divert that on tick. So, the demon spawns quite late. Um, he can't snipe your divert. And even though I was at 100 already, it's just a habitual thing where I always divert there and then instantly amort straight after. So, I've diverted into the amort, and then I'm going to get KO'd there. The amort revives me. <clears throat> and the boss is down to 109k HP. So I end the demon. I start stacking up shards because it's a little bit high. Um, I just write in the chat which rotation the runes are so I don't forget. Um, and then, yeah, you just kill the demon and start stacking up shards. If you uh, got the boss to under 100k HP, you do not need shards with the method that I do it. But for the purpose of this video, 109k HP, I just wanted to be safe, make sure I got the kill so I didn't have to re-record it. Um, and yeah, I just started uh, started stacking shards. So basically now, um, for this point, I'm just going to kill the runes. I will fast forward this part a little bit because it's not really important. Um, I will actually show you guys... Did I... Oh yeah, okay. Okay, so um, the way to the way I lower the rune is um, this is the second rune, and I want to have this rune between 1.5 and 1.8k ideally. Um, so you got to be careful of a few things here when lowering the rune. Familiar auto attacks can kill the rune, so you do have to be mindful if your familiar is on it, just to be watching. Um, your crackling. So you've got to be careful of the cooldown for that. In this case, I didn't take my crackling off because I can see that it's got a 36 second cooldown on my debuff bar, so I don't need to worry about it. You have to be careful of Insight Fear procs. If you're on Insight Fear, the Insight Fear shards every fifth attack or whatever can proc and KO the rune. So at this point, I'm on Ice Barrage just because I don't want that to happen. You do also have to be careful of Aftershock stacks. <laughs> so that's the final thing that can KO the rune when you don't want it to. But all of those aside, I've got 60% on my Aftershock, so that's safe. Uh, 36 seconds on my Crackling cooldown, so that's safe. And then at this point, I'm just racking. Now, I rack there with a the Staff on, gets it down to 3k. And be, and remember I said I wanted it down to between 1.5 and 1.8. So I put a Wand and an Orb on, or sorry, I put a Wand on, I take, take the Orb off, I decide, because I want a Min Hit. And the Rack with just a Wand on takes uh, 923 damage, taking it down to 2.1. So at this point, I don't feel like risking another uh, another rack. 2.1 is perfectly fine for Magma to kill it, but that will allow me to use an extra ability back on Zami. So you'll see when I go for the kill here that I do something slightly different because the rune is slightly higher. So let's just fast forward... 
Okay, I'll go back. Now, I'll explain what's happening here. Um, so there's multiple things that happen here that... To, to be to be mindful of so at this point I am back on um, insight fear because I'm gonna be using a tsunami um, and I'm just about to use natural instinct and I do this when my crackling is about 35 seconds away from being off cooldown this usually gives me adequate timing that when I do end up dumping onto the boss that crackling will proc during the time frame when I'm able to damage the boss so <clears throat> Uh, I'm natural instincting now. At this point, you'll also see that I have Disruption Shield up, that I uh, have Venge up, and I'm praying melee. Um, this is basically so that the melee slam at the start of his attacks are not going to damage me. Um, so yeah, I natural instinct. Um, Vuln, make sure you've got Smoke Cloud on it. Um, build to 100, drop your Sun, drop your Tsunami. And then I'm switching to Ice Barrage, because the autos hit one tick faster. Um, and then I'm just making sure I've got shards on it, which I do. I've got six, which is more than enough, because it's only 109k. Now, I surge back. Um, you can see now I've got 14 seconds till my Crackling comes off cooldown. So that means that by the time I'm attacking the boss, it's going to be perfect. Uh, I Magma the ground underneath the rune. Um... The reason why you do that is because if you target the rune itself, you some stuff that you don't want to fire off can fire off. Like your Aftershock could proc. Um, if you forgot to switch spells, your Insight Fear could proc. Um, there's various things that can go wrong if you target the rune itself. And that's why I only Magma to KO the rune and don't use any other abilities whatsoever. So I know the rune has 2.1k HP. So that means that I've got a bit of time before Magma kills it. So I drop the magma surge straight back to my son and because i know i have time i combust the boss now you could use corrupt you could use combust just some sort of damage over time thing because it's lossless and he's immune anyway so in the back of my in the in the corner of my eye there i can see the rune is dying as i intended to um it's dying fairly slowly and you'll see the first ability that i use there is a combust um this is because the boss is still immune so that combust is not going to start ticking over until I have, I'm ready to unload anyway. Um, as soon as that combust goes, I start tendrilling. So at this point, I activated my tendrils. The rune is still alive, but that's good. Because tendrils is kind of backloaded damage anyway, in the sense that once the crits start appearing, is when the autos are firing off anyway. So <clears throat> by the time that rune dies... Even if you're halfway through your tendrils, you're still going to deal, like, the vast majority of the damage because the autos are back-ended. So, you'll see there, I've just lost my first auto. However, the rune has just died, so now every single auto after this point is going to start hitting. So, that's instantly two autos straight away. I've just finished my tendrils. and I So, basically, tendrils has just dealt... Uh, 32k damage. Um, so I'm Omniing. I don't have to worry about anything here because um, the Disruptor is going to protect me from the melee hit. Um, I've just Omnied and as you can see my Crackling has just procced at the perfect time which is when I intended it to. Um, at this point I haven't even activated I've just activated my Shatter but the Shatter has not appeared yet. So Bearing in mind, the boss had 109k HP, um, and my shatter hasn't procced yet, and it's down to 12. And that's the end of it. So, we've killed the boss before the red smoke has even come out, and the boss had 109. So, with the rotation there, it is tendrils into omni into Shatter, into Wild Magic, and then if you're still, if the boss is still alive, your next bet would be a Zami Staff spec. Um, at that point, if you haven't got it, you're fucked. Um, so, that's the loot, that's the end of the kill. Um, I'm just thinking of things that I may have missed out on covering off. Um... I tried to explain P7 as best as I possibly can. Oh, that's right. The method, the way that I do P7 
the highest that I've ever had the boss and gotten a kill was 171k with a sign. Um, so the sign activated and then I managed to finish it off with the next ability. Um, the highest that I've ever gotten it without a sign and my method is uh, 164k. So 164k without a sign is possible using my method. Um, you do have to kind of get a real good feel for that tendril timing though. If you magma that rune and it's got 3k HP, you've got to be extra careful on how fast you're activating your tendrils because you're going to use the whole entire thing and the boss is still going to be immune. Um, there's a couple other like little intricacies with timings and stuff too. You will get a feel for it. Um, it's, it's, it's definitely like a something that you can do over and over and over again though and once you've figured out the timing it's very very difficult to make a mistake that will cause you to die at this point um i was consistently if i had first bad phase i was consistently able to do 140k no matter which crits i got um but yeah you do just have to make sure and that's the other thing as well i don't meta i always sun and the reason I do that is because sometimes when you run down here and place your magma, if you're not standing close enough to the rune, the magma won't even go off. You've got to run back, recast the magma. I just find sun is way safer on timing. You never have to stress about like how much time you've got left. And sun has, as I said, done as high as 164k for me and consistently 140 with uh, full, full shadow. So... Oh, uh, one more thing that I didn't mention. I do shatter uh, the first phase of P7 uh, with Wand and a Shield on, because it does still hit the 30k. You just will get a single hand auto with it instead of a 2h. But um, I shatter after the Reflect, so that's why I don't want to take my Reflect off. Because that will mean death. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it, you guys. Um, so... Just let you guys watch it again. Yeah, super easy. Didn't even need the wild magic there. Didn't need to Zami stuff. That would have comfortably been 140k if I needed it to be. <clears throat> um, and yeah, that's the end of it. So yeah, if you guys have questions, um, you can try and put them in the comments. Um, I'm pretty bad with YouTube stuff, so I may not reply to you straight away. Uh, you can also add me on Discord, uh, hashtag Stormy, capital S, 1006. I don't know which where, where the hashtag goes, but yeah, 1006 with a capital S is my Discord prefix. You guys can add me there if you want. Um, and yeah, that's like the end of the video. I think I covered off from pretty much everything. Um, good luck going for 4K Zami. It's definitely easier than 4K Glacor. So best of luck, and that's the end of the video.